start this lecture 39 with a thought process from Abraham Lincoln, the president, past president of America, who says that towering genius disdain a beaten path, it seeks regions either to unexplored. Of course, in our life we take a easier path, unexplored path is difficult, but however that will give the meaning to the life. And as usual, let us recall what we learnt in the last lecture. In the beginning, we started with the various kinds of propellants, right, in the solid propellant and the liquid propellant, uh, you know, we have divided into various categories, particularly in liquid propellant I discussed in last lecture, monopropellant, bipropellant, of course, it can be divided into hypergolic and non-hypergolic propellant. And uh, then we moved into the solid propellant engines and then various components we looked at and looked at what are the processes involved during the combustion, which is quite complex in nature and it involves both the all kinds of heat transfer reaction, both solid phase reaction and also the gaseous phase reaction. When I talk about solid phase, you know basically condensed phase reaction not only the combustion, but also the pyrolysis, gasification, all those things take place, which is quite complex in nature. And then we moved into like uh, about how this pressure really vary with respect to, uh, you know, surface area and then uh, burning rate, we derived some expression for the chamber pressure under steady state and unsteady state as well, right. So, and then from that steady state expression, we uh, learn that how we can design the various grain shape and size for obtaining a particular kind of thrust law. For example, regressible, you know, um, uh, uh, kind of thrust law, neutral and progressive kind of things, and also even dual natures kind of things we have looked at. And what we will do, we will carry out the uh, analysis and look at some other aspects, which is quite important, that is the burning stability. And this uh, burning stability, if you look at, uh, for that we need to look at the expression, what we had derived earlier, that if you look at this is V c uh, divided by R t c d p c by d t. This is basically change in pre chamber pressure with respect to time which is nothing but the amount of the propellant being burned, you know, that is uh, which will related to the burning surface A V, pre chamber pressure P C and rho P, that is the density of the propellant. Keep in mind that here, I have neglected this term rho G is almost 0 or very, very small, you know, very, very small as compared to rho P. Right. So, I have neglected. Then the amount of mass which is passing through the nozzle. So, if you look at this is basically the mass passing through the nozzle, this is mass being generated. So, whenever there is an imbalance between these two mass flow rate, then you will get an accumulation of the mass and resulting in increase in pressure. And vice versa. If there is a decrease, you know that also pressure will decrease, because mass would not be accumulated, it will be depleted. So, therefore, now what we will be looking at, we will be really looking at taking this mass flow rate being generated, which is a function of chamber pressure, right. And the mass flow rate passing through the nozzle, which is also a function of pressure, chamber pressure. So, if I look at that, you know, mass flow rate versus the chamber pressure, if you look at it goes linearly, right. The mass flow rate through the nozzle, this is the nozzle fluid, it goes linearly, you know. If pressure is 0, that will be 0. If pressure is some, I am like higher, then it will be go, because it is linearly, you know, dependent on the chamber pressure. But if and this mass flow rate, of course, it will be dependent on A B, but for the time being, we can consider that surface area is remaining constant, it is not changing with respect to the time, right. So,
So, if you assume this a b constant, then it is a function of p c, right. p c means chamber pressure and density of the propellant for the same propellant remains same. I mean it would not really change. We are talking about operational thing, right. So, then if n is greater than 1, that is the index, combustion index, what you call. If it is greater than 1, what will happen? It will be like this, it goes and increase. Now, whenever it will be, if you look at this is the point, right, whenever it is crossing each other, that is the point where it will be having a stable pressure. That means, it would not change, right, because both are matching. That means, this term will be 0, d p c by d t will be 0, because mass flow rate of you know the mass flow rate passing through the nozzle is same as that of the mass being generated due to the propellant burning right for example if it is happening it is a, the rocket engine is stably being operated or it is being operated in a stable manner now due to some reason if there is a change in the pressure let's say pressure will decrease here right what will happen if i just pressure will decrease then this is having nozzle that means more amount of the mass is passing through the nozzle as compared to the amount of mass flow rate being generated due to change in the pressure earlier it was here but now it has gone decrease right then what will happen to the pressure chamber pressure naturally it will decrease because more amount of mass flow rate is passing through the nozzle and then it being generated. So, therefore, there will be depletion of the mass instead of accumulation of the mass in the combustion chamber, there will be decrease. So, as a result, the pressure is being reduced. So, if it is reduced, what happens if there is a some change, then again the point of operation will move towards that, right. Again, it will be changing. So, it will be moving up point of operation. So, this is your operation point, it is goes on moving towards the left side. That means, after that what will happen? Certain critical pressure will be there beyond which the flame will extinguish and burning will stop and then you cannot really operate and this is dangerous. You know suppose sometimes it is happening due to some fluctuations and it has happened. So, you will be in deep trouble, yes or no. Let us take another case like where due to some reason there is a increase in pressure. That means, you are operating here, you are going toward that, this is my pressure, right. If it is operating here, that means, the less amount of mass is going through the nozzle as compared to the mass being generated. If more mass being generated as compared to the mass being going out through the nozzle, then naturally what will happen? Mass will be accumulated if it is accumulated in the combustion chamber, then what will happen to pressure? Pressure will, will go on increasing. That means, my operating point is moved from towards that again. It will, I mean I am saying, suppose then again, you know, if it is increasing, then again there will be a problem. Again it will go on increase. That means, if there is a little perturbation in this kind of operation, then it will become unstable right. Then, this is really dangerous thing, because it, in during operation, you know, there might be little perturbation here and there, it which is likely to occur. So, therefore, this is not really very good, okay. So, let us look at the another, what you call a situation, where n is less than 1. If n is less than 1, then the curve will be like this, that is your dashed line and the blue color, right. Now, if it is operating here, that is the stable operating point, therefore, absolutely no problem, but if due to some changes, if it is occurring, what is happening? That means, my pressure is changed, you know, it has from here, earlier it was here, now it is here. So, then what happened? In this case, the amount of mass being generated right will be higher as compared to the mass being going through the nozzle so therefore what will happen the pressure will 
increase that means this point of operation you know it will go towards that yes or no to go towards the original point of operation which is stable did you get my point are you getting i think some of you are not getting let me explain you again that is i am here right at this point and due to some reason now instead of operating at this point i am the pressure is the chamber pressure is being reduced here so that means my point of operation will be here right in this line now if you look at the amount of mass which is passing through the nozzle is lower than the amount of mass being generated right so if the more amount of mass being generated and less mass is going through the nozzle therefore there will be accumulation of mass if there is accumulation of mass in the combustion chamber then pressure will increase right then it will go back to the original up point of operation that means any perturbation will lead to make the system to come back to the original point so this is a good point right and similarly let us see what happens when there is a increase in pressure due to some reason you are operating here and now you are operating in this point right so then what is happening here in this case the nozzle amount of mass flow rate passing through the nozzle is higher as compared to the the mass being generated so then what will happen the pressure will decrease because depletion of mass in the combustion chamber then the pressure whatever perturbation increase in pressure was there it will come back to the original one that means this is a very stable operation so therefore whenever you are designing a propellant the combustion index should be less than equal to 1 this is a very important thing okay are you getting a point so therefore when you are designing combustors or designing the propellant and you know then one has to take care of it it has to be you know tested and found out you may say look i want you know more than one so that my burning rate will be higher but it will be leading problem so therefore for stable operation n is being used you know 0.4 to 0.7 not even 1 okay why it is not closer to 1 we will see that in a moment so now let us look at another important aspect right so that is what we will see we have seen that r dot right is equal to a p c n right and where a is your capital a t ignition minus t p right we have seen in the this is of course based on empirical result but however it is good enough say now if my tp the propellant temperature is changing it is 15 degree celsius and another case it is 30 degree celsius another case 45 degree celsius so what is happening i am getting a chamber pressure you know very high over here if i take this integrated area you know that will tell me the total impulse what i'll be getting and this area will be same as that of the 30 degree and 45 degree but only difference is there is a increase in the peak pressure chamber pressure what is the meaning of that if the chamber pressure increases we have seen earlier from the thrust coefficient you know relationship that you know thrust will be higher because we have seen that thrust will be thrust coefficient at and p p c or pt2 right that means if pc is increasing and for the same you know throat area and same c tau or the you know what you call the thrust coefficient you will get the increase in pressure thrust will be increasing right but there might be a problem if it is goes on increasing right then there might be a explosion because if it is very high pressure and that will be dependent on what dependent on on this n index right and if it is just too small then maybe combustion may not occur then one has to choose properly and it will be dependent on the ti 
and how it is dependent on T i that is the self ignition temperature of the propellant that we will see. That means, we need to find out the sensitivity of regression rate of the burning with respect to T p. T p is the what propellant temperature, because propellant will be attaining certain temperature, right? Yes or no? Right? So, for example, you are operating in the cold country, the propellant will be having certain temperature, right? And in the summer, we are having 45 degree, even 50 degree Celsius some places and you are operating. So, it will be 50 degree or 45 degree. So, therefore, you know during summer and winter, it will be causing a lot of problems. So, we need to understand how good it is so far sensitivity of regression rate is concerned or how bad it is. For that, we need to define a term that is sigma r dot, which is nothing but change of regression rate with respect to the propellant temperature right, per unit regression rate, while the chamber pressure remaining constant. right. So, what we will do? We have already derived an uh, expression or we have already got an expression empirical relationship that is r dot is equal to a p c n and we know that this we can use this r dot and uh, put into this definition of the sensitivity of regression rate right with T p. I will just put it here. If you look at this 1 over r dot is nothing but a p c n and if I keep this p c is constant right that is nothing but p c n d a by d t p. Keep in mind that I can cancel it out very easily and in place of a I can use this a is nothing but your a by t i minus t p. So, I will just put it a t i minus t p and when I differentiate this a, I will take minus a divided by t i minus t p whole square. So, this will cancel it out and this will cancel it out what it says that sigma r dot is equal to minus 1 over t i minus t p. What it indicates? If t p is very, very closer to T ignition that is self ignition temperature of the propellant, then what happens? This is a very, very big term, right? And that means sensitivity will be very, very high. It is not really called for. So, therefore, let us look at a typical you know value for the double base propellant sigma r dot is equal to 5 into 10 power to minus 3 degree Celsius that means 1 over Celsius. You know if you look at this temperature of course, you can use any any temperature because this is temperature difference you know I can use Kelvin, I can use anything that you should keep in mind. Whereas, for the composite propellant right typical composite propellant sigma that is 2 into 10 power to minus 3 you know inverse of 1 over degree Celsius. What it indicates? Indicates that the double base propellant is more sensitive as compared to the composite propellant. Keep in mind these numbers you should not take it as a sacrosanct that means, it can vary from propellant to propellant, but I have taken some examples. So, value of T p will be less than T i always know? Yes, always. Because sigma r should be negative because there is a minus sign. Which one? T p, T p should be less than T i, right. Okay. Minus, minus 1 upon T i. No, that really does not matter. Matter is that like you know what is the value, how it is changing you know. Okay. That means, you know it will be T p always will be less than you know T i, otherwise it will lead to the problem. Because if it is you know very, very small quantities you know right, then it will be very higher values right because if it is 0, it will be infinite, right. If it is T i is equal to T p. So, therefore, one has to worry about it. So, now how is chamber pressure sensitive to the grain temperature? Because that is a very important aspect, one has to look at it, right. Because what we have seen just now that how this you know regression rate is sensitive to the T p. But now, how this chamber pressure will be, you know, uh, 
sensitive to the grain temperature that is T p, right. So, we know that P c is basically for a steady state of course, this is valid for steady state is A b divided by A t into the other terms like A rho p minus rho g divided by gamma, you know divided by root over R t c power to the 1, 1 over 1 minus n. So, what we will see that P c is basically function of this term A b by A t, right. So, what we will assume that A b is remain constant, then we can think about because A already we know that is you know A is basically uh, what you call A by T i minus T p. So, if you look at then we can define the rho p as change in chamber pressure with respect to the change in T p per unit chamber pressure when A r this is A r area ratio right remaining constant. So, what we will do? We will just take this as a P c, because all other things are remaining constant gamma and then R T c everything remaining constant, only it is varying with A right. Okay. So, and if I will do that, I will can put it here and then in a, in a P instead of P c, I can put K A 1 over 1 minus A and change this K is a constant. So, I can say that vary this and when I will differentiate with respect to this T p, I will get 1 over 1 minus sigma r. That means, again it indicates that n should be less than 1. Otherwise, if n is greater than 1, then it will be a problem and n is equal to 1 is also a problem, because it is 0, this become very infinity. I mean it can lead to the explosion, right. So, and also this is another important thing that chamber pressure sensitive or sensitivity of the chamber pressure with respect to T p is much higher as compared to the sensitivity of burning rate to the T p. Why? Because if I take n 0.7, you know n is equal to 0.7, that means this is 0.3, 1 over 0.3 will be a big number as compared to sigma r, right. It is some, you know certain times than that of the sigma r, it is not 1, right, it is not equal, it is higher. So, therefore, we can conclude that the sensitivity of P c to the grain temperature is greater as compared to the sensitivity regression rate to the grain temperature, right. That is the point I am making. So, it is very important while designing this combustion chamber and the grain, one has to worry about it, otherwise it may lead to explosion by any means explosion has to be avoided and also the you know um, um, what you call the dowsing of the flame also has to be avoided. Suppose you are uh, you know lowering the temperature sometimes or the T p is very very low, then what will happen? Then naturally it will be very low pressure and pressure is low means the flame will be dowsing, dowsing in the sense flame will be extinguishing. So, then you will not get the thrust right, because there is I did not get into that, there is certain critical pressure beyond which combustion cannot take place, particularly when you talk about ammonium percolate kind of or composite propellants, right. And there is another very complex things which I did not cover, but there will be a you know in the even in double base propellant there will be a dark zone will increase and other things which I did not cover in the because of paucity of time, right. So, the you know it will affect the combustion I can say just to sum it up and as a result you cannot have any thrust because the pressure is reduced and it became also unstable as we had seen earlier. So, now question arises we have seen this, now we need to understand how to really you know ignite a propellant, solid propellant. There are two ways of doing it, one is pyrotechnic igniter and other is pyrogen igniter. Right, and you, as I told, it is quite difficult, right, to really burn any solid propellant or the fuel, right. It is similar to that burning a wood or any other things, you know. So it is difficult, but however, let us look at how it can be done. And this pyrotechnic, you know, 
igniter which is used for a small a smaller size rocket engines right and it is having two kind one is basket pyrotechnic igniters other is jet type right there might be several other design but i am i'll be discussing two of them keep in mind that it will be having a you know two part one is booster part other is pyrotechnic mixtures and this is having electrical leads which is also known as quips right and what it will be it will be contain you know electrical wire which will be coated with some kind of lead azide and some other chemicals which is sensitive to the temperature because when the electricity will pass through this and as it is sense some temperature will increase and as a result that will be sensitive and the reaction will start on and this booster kind of things which will be having more reactive as compared to the actual mixtures so it will start burning over here and this will be propagating to the heat and other things and this will burn and some and this is what is the casing is generally people use some kind of urethane or polyurethane kind of material which will be non hygrosol that means it should not absorb moisture that is very important aspect and when this will be burned then it will be what you call the some gas will be produced and the pressure will increase in that and then it will be burst out when it burst out then this will be having some pellets also i didn't i'll show you in the sense in other igniters where pellets will be there right this will be pellets and uh, sometimes people use also the what you call metal powders as well just so that those will be hot and it will go and impinge into the solid surface of the propellant and it will be acting as a local ignition right i will be you know discussing again that so another one which is is a basically jet pyrotechnic igniters which will be having similar that is the similar to that of basket type but however it won't burst and it will be but this portion will be you know will be bursting out right and it will be sending a lot of you know hot particles and gases hot gases at a very high temperature so that the bigger you know like a what you call solid surface will come in contact with that right and so that ignition will start in so if you look at typical powder what is being used uh, what we call also the gun powder and black powder and 74% of you know potassium nitrate and 15.6% of carbon 10.4 percentage of sulfur and some metal powders people do add depending on their design right and it is uh, if you look at this is being used in your firecracker and it is having of course people add some other chemicals to make it more colorful and uh, the products if you look at it will be containing you know something 40% of gas and 60% of solids right because the solid will be helpful for starting the multiple ignition on the solid surface because it will impinge into the surface and you can get a temperature of something 25 90 kelvin of course you can say around 25 this adiabatic temperature you can say roughly one can get very happily 2400 kelvin kind of that beside this there are several other you know pyrotechnic propellants are being used and the mixture of metal as i told like aluminum magnesium even uh, you know boron uh, not boron but uh, some other metals will be being used and uh, you know that potassium percolate ammonium nitrates and other you know what you call oxidizer being used as well there is a another one which is very important that is the pyrogen igniters if you look at this pyrotechnic igniters are generally being used as small size rocket engines but but the bigger size rocket engines we use pyrogen igniters so if you look at it is having always pyrogen igniter will be having a pyrotechnic igniter always and it is a propellant if you look at this is a pyrotech igniter propellant right these are again propellants and which will be burning and there is a chamber you know kind of things which will be very high pressure 
and it will be giving the gas out. It will be going gas out here, there, everywhere and this chamber will be filled, you know. You see, keep in mind that this will be closed. So, that this will be filled and of course, there is a diaphragm here, you know, that which will be closed. So, that pressure will be increased and then it will start igniting and it takes a more time of course, this smaller and uh, generally the time is very critical. Therefore, people use diaphragm so that it can be what you call it can be used you know, what you call um, pressure should increase kind of thing, particularly bigger propellants or uh, bigger rocket engines it is being used. Now, what uh, I will do now, we will see what are the problem we are really facing in ignition process. So, ignition process is a quite complex, it is similar to that of the what you call combustion, I will just visit that one and let us look at what is really happening. See what happened, there is a something kind of, you know, this is a solid surface, which is having fuel and oxidizers and there will be some kind of a, you know, some kind of a ignition sources will be there here, which is you can imagine and then, you know, these are all ignition sources, the particle will come, hot gas will come in hot gases and this particle will be injecting into this impinging into the solid surface. And the heat transfer will be taking place due to con conduction, convection and radiation and the processes which will be occurring is basically the gasification, pyrolysis and combustion because this will be some receding and the chamber pressure will be built up. So, if you look at this will be local ignition will be occurring, these are local ignition source for the combustion and also some hot gases will be coming into picture. These are hot gases and the product will be coming out and then such as that it will supply and the flame will be established. This is your flame, right. And once flame is established near to the surface of the propellant, then you do not need real ignition because self ignition. Keep in mind that you see that flame is very far away from the solid surface do not think it is far away, it is very closer to that, but I have made it you know magnified, so that you can look at the processes involved in that, that is the reason. But however, the flame will be closer to that in the solid surface and that is known as flame stand of distance, you know which will affect the heat transfer rate, which I am not going to discuss about that, but what I will look at is the ignition process. As I told you that uh, this is a process which will be occurring. Let us say it is occurring in this, uh, you know, rocket engines and there is a kind of pyrotechnic igniters is there, you know, which is taking place. Now, when you do that, this is having, you know, throat area. If you look at, it is having throat area, right. And this is having a port area, AP, right. So, depending on this port area to the throat area, it will be having different things. So, when it is happening, then you know when it is started, what happened? There is no increase in the pressure. There will be some range kind of thing which will occur. There is a time because the pressure, chamber pressure is being plotted with respect to time. So, this is you know like a induction period and then the flame will be spreading over the whole region. You know this is the flame which will be spreading, flame. So, this flame spreading also at that time the you know pressure also will not be increasing, they will be increasing very, very little. Okay. Then once the flame being spreaded, you know, then the there will be increase in you know like what you call the pressure because flame started spreading, then the pressure will goes up and once this you know pressure flame being started, the whole chamber will be filled with the gas because it is generating large amount of and you will get this pressure higher and of course, uh, the ignition is still going on and then you know after ignition being stopped, the pressure will reduce and it will come back. And keep in mind that this is happening and then there will be also you know like a increase in burning rate. Therefore, I mean it will be in the beginning 
in the beginning of this there will be a burning rate will be higher because the velocity will be very high in this case because port is more uh, smaller right the surface area and other things will be uh, what you call uh, because the amount of flow rate amount of what you call the propellant being burnt and then amount of bow going through the nozzle is low. So, therefore, there will be erosive burning because the velocity is higher that will be enhancing the regression rate. And of course, then after that it will come to the neutral I mean come to the steady state then this is the neutral kind of burning. But if it is very high A p and t right that might be designed which will take more time because the A p is higher this area is higher. So, then what will happen? That means, it will take more time to be you know a pressure being built up and then come right. So, this is the important one and if you look at we are in after that of course, it will reach a steady state for both the cases. So, let us look at uh, I mean this is little this thing let us now look at a typical pressure chamber pressure and the time diagram. If you look at these are the uh, what you call ignition delay kind of thing where the pressure you know will be something 10 percent of that the peak pressure you know ignition pressure right will be occurring. So, that is the ignition and then of course, there is the it will be go up and this ignition pressure and once ignition will be stopped it will come to the original one it will go and then it will be you know going down as the propellant all being burnt out and there is a silver lining of course, might be there, but that must be avoided. So, this will be dropping down here. So, if you look at the action time actual action time from here after the delay ignition delay time T a to T and then this what you call this known as action, action time, but how I will find out this is a quite a difficult thing. What we do? We basically use this you know kind of a point and we will say that we will put a tangent here and then put a point and then say this is the basically ignition uh, what you call action time because these are all not contributing for the thrust it is the coming you know like a thrust is uh, being reduced you know it is not in the action time. So, this is basically if you look at T i z is the ignition time which is you can determine from the 90 percent of the p ignition that is again a thumb rule there is nothing sacrosanct about it there is nothing particular about it right. So, beside this if you look at the total time what we call the burning time it will start from the ignition delay to the 10 percent of the ignition that is known as burning time and this is not of any value right. Keep in mind that sometimes we will face some problem in the ignition right. So, let us look at what is the kind of problem we will face particularly during ignition right if the pressure chamber pressure when I am talking about p this is basically chamber pressure with respect to time which we can measure very easily right. And then if the pressure is picked up and you have given little more ignition or something then but after that but not you know like it is come down. So, this is known as a misfire you may think that pressure has gone up right. So, therefore, ignition plays a very important role and right. And if you look at uh, there might be some ignition you will give uh, so that it will be high so that which can go directly to the very high pressure and it comes down. Of course, it has reached a steady state, but however, this is the high ignition pressure kind of thing. So, therefore, there will be a, you know avoidable, but the normal what it should be like it will go take a smooth one and come to the transition, but that is a ideal situation generally the two what we go for. There is another one sometimes the pressure will go up slowly and it will reach a peak as soon as the you know ignition till ignition you know propellant or the or the igniter is on. Then after that it will drop down again it will go up because what is happening here there might be some propellant which is being burned and which is remaining you know simmering kind of thing. That means, it is remaining idle, but again it will pick up the temperature and it will go up, but this kind of thing is known as a hang fire which has to be avoided, because this is quite dangerous right to up. So, therefore, there is a various problem and identify one can say whether ignition is good or not that is the what you call I v is the normal ignition 
which one should love to have, but sometimes you will manage with the high ignition, but not really, particularly this one is not that bad, which I have shown here, right. So, this one is ok, I am mean like you know it is really 10 percent of the higher than the what you call the ignition pressure is 10 percent higher than the average pressure. So, one can say acceptable, right. So, now let us compare these uh, two igniters, the you know the main charge whatever in the pyrotechnic is the pyrotechnic propellants. Whereas, the pyrogen we use a propellant itself, but it must be fast burning propellant as compared to the, the propellant in the main engine, right. It must be fast. Why it is should be fast? Because the ignition delay time must be less. For example, suppose you are going somewhere and you want to you know uh, what to call uh, uh, separate the various stages. And if you go on igniting, nothing happening, you know, a lot of failure because of that. So, naturally, you will be the problem. So, therefore, ignition delay must be reduced. And configuration generally it contains powders and pellets, but in case of pyrogen, it is cast as a grain, right. But keep in mind, pyrogen always will be ignited with a another pyrotechnic igniter, right. And it is shorter burn time. Suppose you, you know it is a very short burn time, this can be gone and longer burn time because the 250 to 1000 milliseconds kind of things. And generally, the pyrotechnic is used in small solid propellant rocket engines, and the pyrogen is large solid propellant rocket engines. And if you look at the relative merits, like it is a performance moderately controllable because you are having you know electrical control and everything and thrust law depends on the thrust chamber volume right because that is and simple in construction and processing and this is having lower cost but whereas the in case of pyrogen performance closely you know controllable right but however the thrust law is independent of test chamber volume because you do not know really uh, you know about uh, the chamber volumes and what it will be because a lot of things complexity and complex construction processing and this is a higher cost. But however, it is being used for the bigger rocket engines. You know. So, with this uh, I will now move into the other one that is the liquid propellant rocket engines. I have shown a schematic over here, which is basically V 2 uh, famous V 2 liquid propellant rocket engines. And if you look at it, it is having a payload and it is of course, uses alcohol water mixtures as a tank you know and it is having liquid oxygens and this is your pump you know and uh, this is your thrust chamber and this is a frame of course, the uh, you know nozzle and there is a control jet of vents and other things. If you look at uh, like it is a quite a uh, complex things uh, looks to be simply drawn here, but I will now uh, show you a typical thrust chamber, right. It looks to be little bit complex it is here in this zone, but however, you know it is much more complex than that. So, if I uh, summarize what are the systems a liquid propellant rocket engine should have, can anybody tell me? What are the kind of systems? Suppose the various systems are operating, you know in a unition. So, let us look at the a typical thrust chamber, right, which uh, I have shown here. So, if you look at this is your combustion chamber, right, you know some portion will be combustion chamber and the nozzle together, you know this is your uh, throat region, the throat region, right, and this is the divergent portion of the nozzle. And this now, if you look at this is looks to be a lot of reefs are there, you know like these are the reefs, if basically these are the kind of a fuel return kind of things. And if you look at these are the holes, you know these are the uh, kind of you know reefs or the channels through which the fuel will be passing through. If you look at the fuel is coming over here like that, right. And again, it will go back to that. And this is because here it is being used known as 
the liquid oxygen and which will be taking heat from this combustion chamber and it will be two phase flow mostly it will be in the gas and when it is injected back to this the uh, combustion chamber of the rocket engine. And if you look at it is having a fuel feed system and this is the injector plates and you know these are the holes and there will be igniters which is here pyrotechnic igniters there is seal ring and uh, for that uh, for this you know injector plate there will be uh, what you call a flow straightener and then uh, manifold fuel manifolds oxidizer manifold will be there and you know uh, it is quite complex in nature. So, of course, there is a another way of you can move this thing the gimbal mounting will be there where you can move and then you know make the thrust vectoring and whatever is required. So, if I just summarize that what are the systems we have learned what are the system one can think of. There are several systems which we will be discussing some of them one is the as we are using liquid fuel then we need to inject the propellant and one is injection system right. And in order to inject then we will have to basically pressurize this liquid both the fuel and oxidizer right. So, then we will have to feed and we will have to control the mass flow rate and uh, several other things. So, therefore, we need to have a propellant feed system. And of course, the combustion chamber and then igni ignition systems which I would not be discussing about and the nozzle we have discussed enough right and there is a cooling system. So, what we will be discussing as you go along injection system, propellant feed system and uh, combustion chamber to some extent and cooling system right. These are the things which we will be discussing in a uh, what you call qualitative way. So, let us look at injection system. Injection system is basically to make the you know atomize or to atomize the liquid fuel. What is the atomization? Atomization is basically a process by which you can convert the bulk liquid into the fine droplets right. That is basically the injection systems function right. And there are uh, several kinds of injection systems one you know and which can be obtained that I will discuss, but it is having two component. One is distributor, other is injection head. If you look at I have shown you is a quite complex there in the last figure, but here this is basically a distributor it will be fuel or the liquid will be coming over here. These are the holes and it will be passing through these holes and distributed because this is very important it may come over here it may short circuit and all those things has to be looked at it. Basically it will be a settling chamber which will be the velocity will be low so that it can distribute properly otherwise the liquid will come over here and just inject and a high velocity low velocity here. Typical injectors I have shown it is quite complex in nature right. So and we will be looking at what kind of injection system let I mean uh, little later on, but let us look at main function of injection system. It is basically required to deliver the liquicide flow rate of propellant both fuel and oxidizer because otherwise your thrust will be you know and cannot be generated proper thrust due to the bad combustions and ensure good atomization and mixing the combustion chamber and maintain proper local mixing ratio of fuel and oxidizer in the combustion chamber because that is very important. Otherwise, sometimes it will be rich, sometimes it will be lean, sometimes it will and burn then you know you cannot really utilize properly. And maximize the characteristics velocity for a given chamber length is a very important one and provide cooling to the combustion chamber wall and interior because the temperature is quite high and if you look at the amount of heat which is being generated for a volume it is much higher as compared to gas turbine. For example, in a rocket engine typically you will get around 350 mega joule per meter cube per second kind of thing you know very big 1 meter cube you look at 1 meter 1 meter you know 350 even sometimes people go for even 400 mega joules of energy which is one order magnitude higher as compared to the uh, 
what you call gas turbine engines. So, and provide a cooling system. So, therefore, cooling is very important and to have a higher turn down ratio for the uh, turn down ratio means maximum power to the minimum power which it can operate without really any problem of combustion instabilities and then other problems, easier to manufacture and maintenance. So, I will stop over here and we will see in the next class about various injection systems. Right. Thank you.